So first and foremost, uh, will it work? The narrative behind the birth of this wind turbine is truly fascinating, presenting a distinctive opportunity to harness power in an unconventional manner. In this video, we will delve deeply into the innovation of this wind energy solution, exploring its inception, design, technical intricacies, distinctive features, associated costs, timeline for domestic version availability in the market, and its power generation capabilities. Alpha 311 was founded by Barry Thompson and John Sanderson, a dynamic duo driven by a shared vision of harnessing innovative solutions for sustainable energy. The inception of the company traces back to the COVID-19 lockdowns of 2020, when Thompson and Sanderson, undeterred by the challenges of the global pandemic, embarked on a mission to create a groundbreaking wind turbine. The initial spark came to life in Thompson's backyard, where a prototype of the turbine was crafted, showcasing the duo's hands-on approach to innovation. This backyard experiment evolved into a more refined version with the assistance of external collaborators, marking the birth of Alpha 311. The company's founding principles emphasized a commitment to redefining wind energy through inventive designs and practical applications. The catalyzing moment came when their prototype caught the attention of the O2 Arena, leading to a trial installation and propelling Alpha 311 into the public eye. The founders' resilience, coupled with the successful trial, laid the foundation for a company poised to revolutionize wind energy on a global scale. And what we did was we effectively asked a very silly, stupid question. Why hasn't anybody captured the energy that's going past the traffic? Mm. Um, and we were in the car, you're following a HGV, you can see the airflow and the impact it has on uh, the trees and the bushes by the side of the road. But if you're stood by the side of the road and a bus or a garbage truck goes past you, you feel that rush of air afterwards. And it's that energy that we were looking to, to try and harness. So it was simply asking a silly question, why hasn't anybody done it? Alpha 3, 11's innovative wind turbines revolutionized traditional wind power by capturing energy from passing vehicles and wind. Constructed with lightweight carbon fiber, similar to materials used in F1 cars, the turbines, standing at 5.9 feet, prioritize versatility and ease of installation. Uniquely, they can be retrofitted onto existing infrastructure, such as streetlights or lighting columns, maximizing adaptability and minimizing the need for new construction. Strategically positioned near roads and highways, the turbines take advantage of passing vehicles, creating an artificial breeze. This, combined with natural wind, powers the turbines. Featuring a direct drive magnetic motor, the design minimizes resistance and weight, allowing the turbine to start turning in winds as low as four miles per hour. Alpha 311's turbines excel in generating power even in the absence of strong natural winds, showcasing exceptional efficiency and reliability. To underscore the commitment to localized energy production, smart sensors are integrated, gathering granular localized data to optimize performance based on real-time atmospheric conditions. Weighing 88 pounds, with only about 30 pounds allocated to the turning section, these turbines, made of lightweight carbon fiber, are significantly lighter than traditional counterparts. Alpha 311 is considering adopting an innovative pricing strategy for its turbines, operating under an energy-as-a-service model. Instead of traditional outright purchases, the company might offer turbines for lease to customers at a monthly rate. Our ultimate goal is to be able to lease the turbines, not sell them. We want to get to a point where we are not selling a single turbine. It'll be on a lease for the least amount of money that we can possibly get it. It'll be 30 years. But then what that does is it opens up 
the ability for communities, for local authorities, municipalities around the world mm. to deploy turbines for the benefit because they keep the energy. They're the ones either selling the energy into the grid mm. and they're getting a revenue from it or they're using the energy mm. and we're trying to make that as cheap as possible. It is worth noting that the price of £15,000, about $18,000, for each turbine was mentioned in an article by CNN recently. This price seems expensive to me, but the company founder thinks otherwise. The turbine can significantly reduce electricity bills for an organization that installs them and then generates free electricity, producing a return on the investment in just a few years, according to Thompson. The company claimed that one of its turbines is comparable to 20 square meters, 14.6 feet, of solar panels. One notable trial of the Alpha 311 turbine took place at the O2 Arena in London, where 10 turbines were installed with the potential to produce up to an estimated 87,600 kilowatts hour a year, equivalent to the total electricity used annually by 23 British homes. The company also had a trial at Green Asphalt in New York. All turbines produce energy. It depends on the generator that you put inside them. Mm. Now, what Alpha does is we do wind studies on anywhere that we're going to put our turbines. So we want to know how windy is it. Mm. Because the turbine is modular, we can put different size alternators in along with a corresponding sized inverter. So. If you're looking at a low wind area, we want the least amount of resistance to start the turbine turning, so it'll be a low wattage. So we're looking at a one kilowatt turbine producing, you know, on average, around 10 kilowatt hours per day. Not 24 kilowatt hours, which will be if it's rated and it's running at 100%, yeah. we give an average. Mm. Now, obviously, that doesn't compare to a massive four million pound uh, offshore wind turbine at all. Mm. But what we're looking at is this turbine being so much cheaper, mm. lasting 30 years mm. and being that efficient mm. as an average. But in a much windier place, we can increase that inverter to a five kilowatt uh, inverter, I'm sorry, five kilowatt alternator. It's harder to turn the turbine. There's much more resistance to overcome. Mm. But because it's windier, it can do that easier and then that would produce much more energy. So it depends on the location. Yeah. What we do for customers in our proposals is we give them an average of a one kilowatt alternator and an average of 10 kilowatt hours per turbine per day. Mm. The company plans to first focus on the commercial version before launching the residential or domestic version later. Now we've been, we've had interest from 117 different countries. We've got well over 5,000 entries in our CRM. Granted, a lot of people are saying, I'd like one for my house. We know, but the commercial opportunities mean that we can deploy lots of turbines and bring down that price faster, mm. and then we can look at residential. It's worth noting that a date of 2024 was written on Alpha's website for the availability of the domestic version. So the first one, the first quick win is our wind tunnel testing. So um, Alpha was designed to sit in the middle of a highway. Mm. Uh, we were inundated by uh, commercial entities with regards to, no, we want to put them on our buildings. So whilst we would love to be doing the roads first, there isn't a wind tunnel on the planet that will blow air in opposing directions like we get on roads. Mm. So we'll focus on the commercial aspect first. Mm. Now, we have done all of our computational fluid dynamics. We have a fantastic company up in Nottingham that works with Boeing and Airbus to do that piece of work. So the wind tunnel is just confirming the work that they've done. And it's yeah. a similar concept to what Formula One uses. They model it on a computer, mm. the wind tunnel testing says, yeah, you're about right, and then you put it into the field and it, it gets proved. Mm. So the key for us in the short term is to hit an initial target of 200 turbines for next year. Uh, again, we've financially modeled that out. Yeah. Looking then increasing that 
are year on year. So 1,400 in 2025, 8,400 in 2026. Yeah. So we're looking at learning, perfecting our processes, reducing our bill of materials, making the manufacturing so much more seamless. So that's the, the, the sort of three-year plan that we're looking at.